Last week, we began our series and we were introduced to Lexio Divina, an ancient practice of savoring our sacred texts with greater intention. To savor is to save the taste in our memory, to take something in and allow it to linger. Today, we will create pauses in our short scripture reading in order to meditate on the flavor of the psalmist's poetry so it becomes a mantra that we can visit in our memories when we need to heal the wounds of forgetfulness. Betty Holling comes now to read our scripture for us today. Good morning. The scripture today is Psalm 16, verses 7 to 11 from the New Revised Standard Version. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful one see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Good morning. I am Pastor Angie Kotzmoyer, the lead pastor here at Applewood Valley United Methodist Church. So glad that you are here worshiping with us today. We are in our second Sunday of our new worship series called Beguiled by Beauty. This series is based on a book called Beguiled by Beauty, Cultivating a Life of Contemplation and Compassion by Dr. Wendy Farley, and this book will be released this fall. How many of you have heard of Julian of Norwich? She was an English anchorite of the Middle Ages or a Christian mystic. And so this is someone who for religious reasons uh, secludes himself from secular society as a way to live a prayerful life. She's often known for the phrase, all shall be well or all will be well. It's interesting that she's known for this phrase because if you know anything about her life, uh, you'll be questioning why is she saying all will be well. During her lifetime, her English city of Norwich suffered the devastating effects of the Black Death from 1348 to 1350. The Black Death was a bubonic plague pandemic and the first case uh, is known to have come into England that was documented around June of 1348. And by the summer of 1349, it covered the entire country. The Black Death killed 40 to 60 percent of the population. Can you imagine living during that time as Julian did and watching half of your city pass away? Not only is that heartbreaking and terrifying, but it has long-term effects for society. In fact, the peasants' result of 1381 was a major uprising across large parts of England, and one of the main causes of this revolt was because of socioeconomic and political tensions that were generated by the Black Death pandemic. There were also high taxes because of the conflict with France during the Hundred Years' War, and the rebels were fighting for lower taxes and to end to an end to the system of this unfree labor and a removal of the king's senior officers and law courts. So the rebels were tired of being stomped on. This uprising caused a lot of violence and riots with destruction and fires, and the rebels killed anyone that they could that were in the royal government. And on top of all of this, this plague and the Hundred Years' War and the Peasants' Revolt, there were also climate disasters. There were floods and famines that no one had seen before. Julian lived during a time where every possible sphere of life was under intense assault. 
Religious fears, environmental, political, all parts of life were being beat down. Now, I don't know about you, but as I was researching and learning about Julian of Norwich this week and learning about all the things that were happening during her lifetime, I couldn't help but think, am I reading about 2020? (laughs) We seem to be experiencing similar circumstances to what was happening in the late 1300s. And that old phrase, history repeats itself, is somewhat true. Life is messy. Life is hard, and yet perhaps all will be well. Did some of you scoff or laugh at me or shake your head? Yeah, sure, Pastor, all will be well. Why in the world would Julian say that, and why are you saying that to us right now? Well, it's because it's been researched, excuse me, that that humans have a negativity bias. How many of you remember the negative comments or encounters of friends or family, coworkers or strangers way more easily than you remember the positive ones? <laughs> I know I do that. And it takes like a million more positive comments to forget about that one negative one, doesn't it? Well, this is evolutionary. In our, it's in our, our brain's way of keeping us safe and avoiding what we perceive as negative or harmful or unsafe. Now, yes, our negativity bias can keep us safe and perhaps help us to be resilient through hard times. But another thing our negativity bias, biases can do is to make us feel completely miserable. And it can inhibit our ability to be in relationship with one another and with God. I praise God who guides me. Even at night, my heart teaches me. I'm always aware of your presence. You were right by my side and nothing can shake me. My heart is happy and my tongue sings for joy. I feel completely safe with you because you won't abandon me to the grave. You won't let your loved ones see decay. You show me the path to life. Your presence fills me with joy. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. I'm always aware of your presence. You are right by my side and nothing can shake me. What faith this psalmist had. What faith. In the midst of pain and injustice and suffering and longing, we too easily forget too easily forget who is right beside us always. We're so stressed and pressed that we can't look beyond our own emotions to see and feel God with us. Our to-do lists are too long and the world keeps changing and we can't slow down because if we were to slow down, we wouldn't have the time to catch up. Suffering. Suffering is a part of being human. But what makes suffering so soul-destroying is our forgetfulness that God is with us. When Julian of Norwich said, all will be well, she's not saying that terrible things and suffering aren't happening around her or around us or that they don't matter. You see, for a long time, the common way of the church with a capital C talked about suffering and natural disasters and and bad things happening as God is angry at us and we are being punished. These things are happening for our punishment. And so Julian is saying, all will be well. That was a statement against the type of of that was a statement against the type of destructive theology that was being taught perhaps is still taught today. The great insight of Julian was saying that actually, that's not true. That we aren't being punished by God, that these are things that are just part of our experience as humans in creation. All of life that we are going through right now, the hills and the valleys are part of our experience. And the deepest truth is that God loves us. 
As the psalmist says, I feel completely safe with you because you won't abandon me to the grave. You show me the path to life. Your presence fills me with joy. All will be well when we heal our wounds of forgetfulness with God. When we remember that God is always good all the time and all the time God is good. One of my favorite praise gospel songs is called You Are Good. This song really helps to remind us of God's goodness. Israel Hutton uh, wrote You Are Good in 2001, and Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church wrote an article about Israel in this song. They write, Israel is a biracial man and was immersed in racial tension from a young age, even being physically shoved by his maternal grandfather for being black. Reflecting on the difficulties of his racial, religious, and cultural identity, Israel notes, when you read Psalm 139, it throws out, it throws out all the I'm here accidentally stuff and that he had believed for so long. He says, I felt like an accident. I felt like a mistake. But when you understand, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm skillfully crafted. How precious are your thoughts towards me? How marvelous are your works? When you start considering all of that and going, okay, I didn't just sneak into the earth. I was created for something great. The more I dwell on that, the more I meditate on that, the more I share that with people who want to hear it, the better I feel about why I'm here. The song, You Are Good, talks about God's goodness and our human response to worship God because of God's goodness. Listen to the lyrics. Lord, you are good, your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good, your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for you are good and you are good. Sometimes, We just have to be reminded of God's goodness when we are suffering. Sometimes we just need to stop and let God's grace heal our forgetful souls. Sometimes we just need to worship God, not the corporate worship where you come and listen to me give you an inspiring word, but the heart worship. What is that for you? Remember, during this worship series, we are practicing a contemplative way of life. So what's that going to be for you? My heart worship, my true heart worship, is singing and dancing and clapping to my favorite gospel songs. Letting my soul talk to God through the music. I think that's why I love the song, You Are Good, so much. Because it speaks to the truth It speaks the truth to my soul about God. And I forget how much I need that heart worship to God. I haven't sung and danced and clapped in months. Well, because the church buildings are closed. You hear that excuse that I just, that just came out of my mouth? The church and worship was never the building or the Sunday morning. The church is the people And the worship is what you do to connect to God. So what are you going to do this week? What's your heart worship going to be this week? That heart worship that reminds you that all is well, that God is good, that God is with you, that you can get through this pain. Let your heart worship speak through your soul to God this week. Do it, friends. And you will be so glad that you did. Amen. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. 
people from every nation and tongue from generation to generation we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who 